Let's just say that the uh, greater good has rarely outweighed my own self-interest. When Howard Stark was criticizing himself, he was referring to his past hedonistic lifestyle and his desire of getting famous, just like Tony also used to be in the past. If you look closely, the certificate is actually of Dr. Margaret Elizabeth Peggy Carter, who was running strategic scientific reserve activities during that time. Ever wondered who was the real Jarvis? Here we go. We ever met that guy? Have you noticed the lights behind Thanos and Nebula? They seem more like habitation fields for his army. One kind of headquarter, you can say. Did you notice the sword of Hawkeye? This is the exact same sword which was used in Tokyo Massacre. When Hawkeye said this, You know what I've become. He was referring to his past self we have seen in Tokyo, Ronin the Assassin, if you remember. If you take a closer look, Hawkeye at first got confused due to waking up after fainting, and then he realizes that he has something in his hand. After seeing the Soul Stone, he immediately remembers Natasha and starts crying. Such an amazing screenplay in a chronological order. I really liked it. When they all got back, Captain America and Rhodes seemed to be very excited about their achievement in New Jersey and Morag. But Hawkeye came back with an unhappy face as he had to see the demise of Natasha with his own eyes. Clint, where's Nat? Did you also realize that Nebula also came back at the same time even after being caught by Thanos from 2014 and the time was wasted? I will explain the science behind it in the end. Hulk as a very physical and angry person also seems to show his grief through physical expressions. For example, such an amazing consideration while screenwriting. You can get to see that Captain America is crying for Natasha, but Tony Stark seems to look very normal. It's not because he is heartless, but he tends to not show his emotions in front of someone. That's the same thing he did in front of his daughter, if you remember. Will he learn from his mistakes? Only God knows. I'll do it. Excuse me? It's okay. Um, no, 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 wait, wait. Did you know why nobody was willing to let Thor snap his fingers with the stone? Because they also require emotional stability. While snapping, the stone bearer also has to have the exact thoughts, emotions, and ideations that he desires to happen in reality. If his thoughts get instable, the reality will also look instable as well. But Fat Thor's mind was not ready for this. That's why when he said, What do you, what do you think is coursing through my veins right now? She's with. Now you can see and hear the chirping of birds, which actually confirms that the animals in the universe were also included in the snap. Well done. Thank you, Father. I suspected nothing. The error can never do. Did you know why Thanos said that? You had to look at the depth of his words and feelings. According to Dr. Sigmund Freud, we humans have a tendency towards either trusting people blindly or judging people with no clue. Our mind is not designed to think of the middle way. So when Thanos literally said that, he was referring to all the blindly trusting Avengers who did something extreme only the arrogance tend to do. Did you notice that Beard of Thor also got organized when he summoned his thunder power? I thought the visual artists would leave that small detail, but I'm ready amazed at what they have done. I never knew that such a robot like Nebula can also have teary eyes and she can also cry. Ever wondered what the technology is called? This is called the Nano Gauntlet which is a very powerful weapon created by Tony Stark using nanotechnology. It can store and release a vast amount of energy and it can also be used to project powerful blasts of energy or to summon lightning from the sky. Amazing isn't it? Did you also get puzzled after seeing our captain lifting the Mjolnir so easily? Well, Mjolnir is a mystical weapon which has the ability to choose its bearer on its own. Requirements? Well, the bearer must be selfless, kind, and courageous. And our captain had all of them. This is the biggest reason behind Mjolnir choosing him, just like it also chose Dr. Jane Foster. We were gone, but Dr. Strange was there, right? He was like, it's been five years, come on, they need us. And then he started doing the yellow sparkly thing that he does all the time. What are you doing? So, it seems like Tony really learns from his mistake. This time, he has decided to show his love for Peter instead of just keeping it inside. Don't touch me. You missed the first time. Then you got him both the second time. Did you realize what he meant exactly when he said both of them? I hope so. Hey. 
You said one out of 14 million we win, yeah? Tell me this is it. If I tell you what happens, it won't happen. Did you know why Doctor Strange never talked about the outcome? Because the spoiler could make the mind of Iron Man unstable, making him more nervous, inept or even have a change of mind. So Strange didn't find it to be a good idea to tell him about the truth as it could change both the course of the action of Tony Stark as well as his mind. Look at this guy by the way behind Strange struggling so hard to open the portal. What the hell is that? The red circle in the eyes animated could also be done better. What the hell is that? They didn't have time for this? The circles are not even stabilized. On the same spot. Alright, let's forget it. By the way, do you believe that Thanos could literally die that moment in the hands of Wanda alone if Thanos didn't cheat in the battlefield by ordering rainfire? I believe so. Rainfire! But Sire, our troops just do it! When Valkyrie was slicing this alien ship, you can get to see its blood, which was dark purple in color. The same color of eggplants. I mean, Thanos. When Thanos bashed his head on the head of Marvel, she didn't react. When she was about to hit back, Thanos looked very worried. But when Thanos took the power stone, she knew it was the very moment he fucked up. But this scene really shows that Thanos is physically not that powerful in front of Captain Marvel without the stones. While everyone else was vanishing, it took a while for Thanos to go vanished. You know why? Because he was the most powerful being among everyone who were supposed to be vanished. So it took some time for him to get vanished as well. When Tony was about to die, Peter starts calling him Mr. Stark in the beginning. We won, Mr. Stark. We won, Mr. Stark. But the worse his situation gets, the more concerned Peter seems to be. And finally, Peter chooses to call him just Tony instead. Tony. This really shows that Peter also used to consider Tony Stark as one of his family members. It was such a nice touch to see that the core reactor stopped emitting lights when Tony stopped breathing. Because his core reactor really functions upon his heartbeat. If the heartbeat goes down, the reactor will go down as well. You can get to see Captain America crying for Iron Man, meanwhile Thor is still confused like he was when he lost his father, his mom, here, Asgard, and his best friend Heimdall. When the previous video of Tony was played, both Rhodes and Pepper started crying. Because one was the best friend of Tony Stark and the other was the life partner so it makes sense but his little daughter was still confused about what happened such a small but amazing detail this scene is actually one of my favorite parts of the movie because if you remember the 2012 Avengers you will also remember Captain America loathing Tony for being hedonistic I've seen the footage the only thing you really fight for is yourself you're not the guy to make the sacrifice play. But he proved our captain wrong this time, sacrificing his own life for the greater good. Also, did you notice the core reactor of Tony Stark, which was also referred as the heart of Tony? Now you know that. If you take a look at all of these people, you will find out a kid on the right side who is Harley Keener from Iron Man 3. Do you still remember him? What does the power? Oh my god! While Wanda and Hawkeye were talking, you can get to see tears in the eyes of Wanda. Was she crying for Tony Stark? No. She was still grieving for Vision and you know very well how far the grief went to in the future. This is me being reasonable. Remember when Thor said this? It's time for me to be who I am rather than... Who I'm supposed to be. He wanted to say that he wants to follow his heart rather than following the expectations of others being a hero. He wanted to take care of his personal well-being this time. This scene is actually a symbol of self-care. I really liked it. While fighting on who is going to be in charge of the ship, Thor suddenly changes his tone of speaking and tries to gesture that idiot telling who is going to be the true leader of the ship. I really liked this savage moment. Of course. Of course. You remember when I talked about the quantum physics laws and I said that I would explain it later? Let's do it. It took five years for the world, but five hours for Scott inside the quantum realm. It took different times for the Avengers to get the stones back, but they all came back at the same time. It took five seconds for our captain to come back, but as much time as he needed for giving the infinity stones back. Now the question is, what's wrong with the time difference? So the time flow in quantum realm works differently compared to the time flow in real life. In the quantum realm, 
you can use a timestamp to go from one point of time to another. In that case, it takes the same amount of time for everyone to go from one point of time to another. In the quantum realm, the time you spend in different time points is not counted. Only the travel time is counted. Which means Nebula can spend 5 hours extra in point 1 and Rhodes can spend only 2 minutes in the same point but their stay in those points will not be counted. Which means only the travel time will be counted and they both will appear almost at the same time. The same goes for Captain America. He can spend as much time as he wants in the specific time points. Only his travel time will be counted in the quantum realm. And his travel time is 5 seconds in real life but he can stay in those points as long as he wants. The same goes for Scott Lang. He was stuck inside the quantum realm for 5 hours as there was nobody to turn on the switch. But it was 5 years for the whole world. So here's the summary. In the quantum realm, only the travel time is counted, not the time you spend in those points. So you can spend as much time as you want in those points but only your travel time will be counted. There has to be someone or any automated technology to hit the switch of the time machine to get you back. Otherwise, you will get stuck in those time points. I hope you understand now. Now, there is no mention in the movie exactly how our Captain America managed to create an alternate reality to live with Peggy in the past. Maybe he just went there, lived there for decades and came back old after the death of Peggy? Because Banner also said, How long is this gonna take? For him, as long as he needs, for us five seconds. Now, I don't find any other way for Captain America to live with Peggy other than this one. How Captain America managed to give back the stones as well as managed to live with Peggy for so long should be included in an entire movie. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.